galaxy where the version I saw was pathetic. That's right! Hey guys, Steve here, and welcome to another Five Nights at Freddy's fan film review. As you can see, the most recent Grey Rich Five Nights at Freddy's fan film has come out, Five Nights at Freddy's Forgotten Memories. Now, this review is going to be a lot like my Desolate Location review, where I just watch the movie and make jokes along the way in nostalgia critic style. And also, like all my other reviews, there will be spoilers ahead, so if you have not seen the movie yet, go watch it first and then come to this review. We good? Okay, let's get started. We start off this movie with Fire Mario dropping off a strange paper to the old lady Mike Schmidt talked to in the last one. Anybody there? Hello? We then cut back to Mike Schmidt, once again played by Gray Rich, who is still experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder from the incident he had last time. Mike. 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 What's been bothering you? All the FNAF shipping in Rule 34. Then, after apparently pretending to be Freddy Krueger, he realizes that there may be one child spirit that's still not freed. As a result, he feels he has to return to the old location. His friend Michael, who somehow survived the first movie, tries to convince him not to. What are you doing? Cosplaying. Meanwhile, back at the pizzeria, this weirdo in a white hood is lurking. He takes what's left of all the animatronics from the first movie and decides to combine them all into a giant super machine. Soon afterwards, cosplayer Mike shows up and investigates the building. Oh yeah, and this cop shows up too? I wonder if he's going to die. <laughs> Did somebody eat Taco Bell again? No, he finds out that the cop got killed and flees the scene. He then reunites with the old lady we saw earlier and explains his situation. She then shows him the pamphlet she received in the mail about the new location, and Mike ultimately decides to work there. Despite Michael's pleads, Michael begins his first night at the pizzeria, which is basically just Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Except it's only Freddy and Mangle. This leads to the biggest problem of this movie for me, the Mangle itself. Now don't get me wrong, the Mangle puppet itself looks great! way better than that Joker from the first movie. And the one scene with the mangle is actually a very suspenseful scene. Sha la 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 my oh my looks like the voice too shy ain't gonna kiss the girl. <laughs> But this also leads to the main problem. Aside from that one scene, the mangle is barely in the movie. It has like this one scene and then it's just gone. It's not in the rest of the movie. Although apparently there was a deleted scene that will be reshot for the bonus features with the mangle. So I'll be looking forward to that. While working his shift at this new location, however, Mike Schmidt gets a strange phone call we can assume to be the guy in the white hood we saw earlier. 
He claims to have captured his friend Michael and will only give him back if Mike meets him there at the old location alone. Mike Schmidt does just that. However, the old Freddy ends up following him there. How did he get over there so fast? Mike Schmidt took a car. How did Freddy get there on foot? Was his AI set to 100? Nonetheless, Mike is more than ready and strangles Freddy to death. Oh, and also lopping off his head. Because that hasn't been done before in Five Nights at Freddy's fan films. This time around, however, he decides to rebuild Freddy and reprogram him. It's no use, though. Michael encounters the white hooded man again and finds out that he, the whole time, was none other than his own friend, Michael. We are then shown through flashbacks that Michael was in cahoots with Calvin the whole time, who, may I remind you, was the human villain in the first movie, who became a bunny. But regardless, Michael wants to continue the William Afton legacy. Michael then tries to strangle Michael, and it's all over for him. Nothing's gonna come to save him. We're gonna have a bad ending. You forgot about the bear! Now, as awesome as this scene was, I still have a few minor problems with it. Perhaps a few more well-chosen sound effects in certain spots could have made certain scenes more powerful. For example, when Michael, aka Golden Freddy, falls down the stairs for the first time. Imagine if the scene went like this. What if when Michael falls down the stairs, you actually hear the thuds as he falls down? While the camera may look away, just hearing the sound effects would have made the scene a lot more powerful. Now granted, when Michael comes back up a second time as a zombie and is then knocked down again, then you can hear the body going down the stairs. It's not very loud, but it's still there. Still, I would have liked for the first time he falls, you actually hear the thuds. That way the scene could have been a lot stronger. Take notes, Gray. Hopefully you can include it in an improved audio version like you did with the first movie. You could perhaps throw a ball down the stairs and record the sound effects or get one off of YouTube. Either way would work for me. So, Mike then talks to Freddy about what should they do now. <laughs> I don't know why, but I find that funny every time. So Freddy has Michael leave the building, and then he burns it down. But right before the credits, Mike gets a phone call from Mr. Deep Voice from Desolate Location. I'm sorry now, who's this? My name is William Afton. <laughs> And that was Five Nights at Freddy's Forgotten Memories. Overall, I really enjoyed this movie. In fact, I enjoyed it even more than the first Grey Rich Five Nights at Freddy's film. My only major problem was that Mangle was barely in it. Now that I think of it, Foxy has not been a strong point in these movies, hasn't he? But aside from that, anything else I bring up is either a minor issue or is just nitpicking. I would still recommend this movie to any Five Nights at Freddy's fan. Actually, now that I think of it, this is a sequel, so if you haven't seen the first one, you will be completely lost with this. So, I recommend going to see the first one now, and then preparing yourself for a perfectly cheesy, yet effective experience. I give it an 8.7 out of 10. Would recommend it to any Five Nights at Freddy's fan. But now I want to hear from you. What did you think of this movie? Let me know in the comments. And as always, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.